What's up, I'm Alex the Entrepreneur, and in this video I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the CK editor in your Strapi admin. This is a what you see what you get editor that will substitute the default what you see what you get editor. I have to acknowledge the fact that the code for this lecture is taken straight out from the official Strapi docs, so there's gonna be a link you can follow through and you're gonna be able to copy all of the code through that link. The point of this video is to introduce more generally plugin development and at the same time getting you to build the CK editor as well. Why take this tutorial? First of all, you're gonna be building something cool, you're gonna be building a new plugin and you're gonna be learning how to do that. That's really the point of this tutorial. The first thing we'll do uh, beside installing Strapi will be to set up your plugin by running the command Strapi generate column plugin and then the name of the plugin which is going to create a new folder called slash plugins and inside of that folder you're going to have a new package called slash wysiwyg which will contain the entire code of your plugin. After that we're going to install CK editor in the plugin and then we're going to run Strapi in watch mode. Something that I've noticed as of the latest version, which is 3.1.1 as of uh, shooting this video, is that you may not be able to run the watch admin mode when using NPM. So you may actually have to use yarn to run the command yarn develop dash dash watch dash admin. And that's because NPM for whatever reason will eat your dash dash command and it's not gonna go through. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna build a visual component uh, which is gonna be a React component, which notably will receive three parameters as properties, and these properties will be received directly from Strapi. These parameters will be the onChange, which is the handler that we have to call whenever the input changes, then the name, which is the name of our field, and then the value, which will be the current value of the field, and obviously we're gonna be able to change it. And you can see at the bottom of this slide that once we call the onChange, we're gonna be passing an object with a target, and then um, the name and the value. So that way you know what's coming. And the other interesting part during this tutorial will be the register field. And by calling Strapi the register field, we are uh, effectively replacing the normal uh, editor with our new custom CK editor. So let's get started. I have a fresh Strapi install and inside of it I'm gonna run npm run Strapi generate colon plugin what you see is what you get which will create the boilerplate for our plugin. Next up I'm going to run the strapi in watch admin mode which means that at any any time we change the admin panel strapi will rebuild it and it will keep it updated so i can do that by typing npm run develop dash dash watch dash admin however there seems to be a bug where the watch admin uh, parameter gets eaten up so I actually have to use yarn. You may, this may be patched as you watch the video, but I will, I will just type yarn develop dash dash watch dash admin. So that way you can see that Strapi gets run with the watch admin, which is gonna open a panel on localhost 8000. And again, anytime I make an edit, it will trigger a rebuild. In the meantime, I'm gonna open uh, the code with Visual Studio, Strapi plugin, and I'll also set up Git so by typing git in it so that we can keep track of everything i'll just do git add the dot git commit dash m initial commit with plugin folder there we go so we can see that we have a dash plugins folder that contains a bunch of subfolders most notably we have a structure that is very similar to the api folder with config controllers and services which means that we can have our custom routes our custom models and our custom uh, controllers and services but we can also use the slash admin folder to extend the admin panel more specifically we're going to be working with the index.js file which is basically our configuration file in which we're going to specify a bunch of properties for example this part right here the menu on line 29 to line 48 it allows us to specify whether the plugin will show on the menu or not but if you change this keyword plugin section to plugin section links 
you're actually gonna be seeing your plugin link here, which will show you a home page from the plugin. And the home page is specified here on line 25 as the main component. So this is the app component and app is inside of slash containers slash app. So if I go in index.js here and there's gonna be a component called home page and I change any text here, I'm gonna be able to customize it. This is from Alex. And uh, due to using watch admin, the Strapi panel will rebuild and it will show my changes. This is something that you wanna uh, keep in mind, but at this time we're working with the field API. So we're actually gonna hide the plugin from the menu. So I'll literally delete the entire part related to menu. So that way we're not gonna be able to see the plugin in the menu. And by removing the main component here on line 25 and setting it to null, we will also be able to not show the plugin at all. So at this point, you can no longer access uh, our plugin. So next up, we're gonna get started with installing our dependencies for the CK editor. So I'm going to open a new tab and I'm gonna CD into plugins and then into what you see is what you get. And then I'll type npm i at ck editor slash ck editor 5 dash react and then at ck editor slash ck editor 5 dash build dash classic. The first one is the uh, functionality for react and the second one is the classic look for the CK editor. At this point, this part is done, and that means that we can literally go through the docs and just copy the rest of the code uh, as it's shown. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be copying the code from the docs while giving you comments on it to allow you to extend the functionality even further. I'm in the Strapi documentation, and from there I'm gonna go on guides, and then I'll click on creating a new field in the administration panel. And uh, basically the first four steps uh, we already did. And at this point, there's the part of copying the code. By the end of this video, we're gonna have copied all of this code and we're gonna have the same behavior. However, to avoid any sort of confusion from you and to also give you some more value, I'm actually gonna show you a simplified version of the plugin first so that you can understand how the plugin actually works. And that way you're not just blindly copying and pasting code from some authority. We can see that we have the media lib and the media lib component is used to allow you to upload an image and then insert it into the CK editor. So this is probably the last thing we're gonna add in our uh, component. Then we have the WC what you get wrapper. And this is a wrapper that will contain both the media lib but it will also contain the CK editor. So basically this is the main component that we're gonna be using so that you, it will contain both the media uploading functionality as well as the text editing functionality. And then the last component that we're gonna be working with is the CK editor, which I'm gonna show you a simplified version of because by understanding how this works, you're gonna be able to build your own custom fields. Something that you wanna note is that at this time, as of version 3.1.1 of Strapi, you're only gonna be able to customize fields when uh, of, that are already existing, such as Boolean, text editor, enumeration, etc., etc. But you're not gonna be able to customize and create new fields. That's because the current implementation of the extensible field API, it only applies to the content manager, but it does not apply to the content builder. This may change shortly, but as of now, you're only gonna be able to customize fields that already exist. I'm going to actually create a, a file with the same name as this one. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna go in my components, which is gonna be a new folder. So I'll create a new folder called CK Editor, and then I'll create a file called index.js, which is gonna be our default export. So at this point, I'll import React from React and I'll just do export default, open parentheses, and I'll just put a div that says CK editor, because I really want you to understand this part. So at this point I created a new file in a subfolder called CK editor, index.js, then I'm gonna go in index.js here, and I have my Strapi register plugin, 
And basically this call registered the plugins and allows Strapi to work with it. However, we're gonna actually be calling a different method on Strapi, which is gonna be called strapi.registerField. And by registering field, you're gonna pass an object parameter and the object parameter will have two keys. The first key will be the type, which, is, which needs to be the name of a valid field. In our case, what you see is what you get. And then the second parameter or the second key will be called component and it will be our actual component. So in this case, it will be the CK editor. And now I'm gonna import CK editor, or at least uh, Visual Studio Code already imported it for me, and I'm gonna save. What's gonna happen is that Strapi will rebuild, I can go in the content types builder, I can go on my user and maybe add a bio, for example, which is gonna be a rich text. And uh, uh, this is the, the what you see, what you get field. So now by saving the user, and then creating a new one, so going in the edit user or add new user, we're actually gonna see our new component. So this CK editor text here is coming from this render method. So that means that if you just want to create or customize your fields, all you have to do, all you have to do is just strap it or register field with a type, so you're gonna have to figure out the specific type names, and then you're just gonna assign it a component. That's all. And the simplest way to figure out a type is to go in the uh, API, although in our case it's gonna be in the extensions, and then go in your models and just look at the type that you wanna overwrite. So you can see that bio is gonna reach, be a rich text, although it actually gets converted to what you see, what you get. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. However, you can see that all of the other abstractions, all of the other functionality, is not necessary if you're just trying to replace a field. So at this point, we can very confidently continue. We could literally just copy the CK editor code, which is what I'm gonna have you do. So copy out the CK editor and put it in the CK editor code. And by saving, at this point, you'll see that the admin panel will rebuild and now you're actually gonna have a basic implementation of the CK editor. To avoid confusion, I'm just gonna create a simple collection type called post, and a post will have a title, and then I'm also gonna have a rich text called content, and I'm gonna save, and the post will be here. Let's add a new post, and you can see that we have our new paragraph, and there we go. So you can see that we were able to uh, save our post. I can go in the roles and permission, public and make my post public by clicking on find and find one. And I'll go on localhost uh, 1337 slash posts. And you can see that the API is now exposing my data and I can see the content and the content will be, it will be actual HTML. So at this point we can finish up the rest of the code by just creating the rest of the files, these two files the media library and the uh, what you see, what you get wrapper. The point that I wanna make before we get there is that this editor, which we have in Visual Studio Code, will receive three properties. One property called on change, another one called name, and the other one called value. That means that it's not on you to manage the uh, value that the field is currently having in the Strapi panel. The only job that you have to do is to provide a interface, a user interface, so that your user can interact with it. And then you're simply gonna call the onChange, and by calling that, you're assured that Strapi will take care of the rest. So that means that you just have to deal with receiving user input, then call the onChange, and then at that point, your data will be handled by Strapi. So again, it's a very small interface, that you actually have to deal with. Although you, if you go through this tutorial, you may feel like you are exposing yourself to a lot more. So at this point, let's just set up the what you see, what you get. We're just gonna do a new component, new folder, what you see is what you get, and a new file called index.js. And then I'm just gonna literally copy the entire of the code. And this one will import both the editor and the media lib, which means that uh, we need to create the media lib, otherwise it will crash. So let's create the media lib. I'm gonna copy it, and I'm assuming it's gonna be in slash media lib slash index. Yes, so right click on component, new folder, media lib, 
with uppercase L and then new file index.js. There we go. So the last change is to go in the slash plugin slash wyswyg slash index.js and change instead of using CK editor as the component, use what you see is what you get, which is going to be wysiyg. And we're going to import it from slash components slash WYSIWYG and we're gonna set it as our component. So at this point, if we refresh and we go in the post, we will actually see the fully updated version. And this version will actually trigger the media library, will allow you to upload an image, and it will also add it to your HTML. At this point, the last thing I wanna leave you with is a security consideration. And the security consideration is that if you're going to receive this HTML, you cannot treat this as a safe uh, HTML. You will actually have to sanitize it manually because if you were to uh, call something like json.parse on it, if that HTML contains a script tag, you are actually making your application vulnerable to script injection. So my recommendation is to download a library that will sanitize your data and call something like sanitize of json.parse of your content. So hopefully this provided a nice and simple introduction to working with plugins in Strapi. There's a bunch of stuff that is still being ironed out and I myself am not completely aware of uh, the internals of how it works. So I'll be making more videos on plugin development Make sure to leave any question you may have and I'll address them. And again, thank you very much for watching.